Aha! Stan in the <laughs> buttons back. Man cave. Sunday afternoon. May the 8th. So, VE day, isn't it? Sent my wife off to uh, go in the shed for day. She just shook her head, walked away, and left me to get on with it. So, Panzer Grenadier Beret sent to me courtesy of Aero Military Collectibles, John Shannon, great bloke. And I believe this is how they wear it because the little tail, which is all knotted, that's supposed to be right, but at the very back, so the patch is away from the eye. I think that's how you wear them, anyway. I'm not trying to impersonate anybody, just in my man cave doing my own thing. So, uh, I did mention it in the live, I was going to mention it in the live stream, but uh, it all went on Friday night due to technical issues when John was having. And I, uh, <coughs> what I was going to say, someone had said to Aero Military Collectibles, uh, if you, you should go on TikTok, you should go on um, Instagram to boost your channel. And uh, why am I getting, fla getting a flashy light there? It's moving about, isn't it? Maybe move this back a bit. Uh, guess the film. Guess the film, guess the film, be easy this week. Yeah, so uh, the su suggested that John go on TikTok, uh, Instagram, what, what what have you. I did go on Instagram, as still on the stand, and picked up a lot of followers. Uh, I was doing it to enlarge my YouTube channel. There is some interesting stuff on there, but I won't be posting on there. I mean, I might do it again, but basically, loads of, you get loads of adverts. The more people you follow, so I get adverts all the time. There was one bloke uh, who was a bit very political. And he watched one of the video, I uh, watched one of the photographs I'd put up, then started saying, Why aren't you following me? And I thought, well, I don't want him. Another bloke kept asking me very persistently for my details, which uh, I wasn't, I blocked him. Then another bloke three times asked me for the details, quite weirdly, of another fellow YouTuber that I'm in contact with. I thought, oh, I've been given you that. I thought, oh, I'm coming off this thing. Not my cup of tea at all. So, what crap am I going to talk about for? Oh, and also, Centre Britain Army Circle Shops Closing. Kidding, aren't you? They work, they're going to be online. I messaged them, they are going to be selling things online. Well, in the next year, I went straight online on Friday night when I found out I bought some Austrian Y straps, which are very similar to the German World War II ones, apart from the, the ring at the back, it's like a triangle. But from the front, who's going to know? I had to do two German World War II setups and only 19 quid, free postage. So I'll have a, I'll have a look on them. The repos are touching 30, aren't they? 25, 30, 30 quid, you know? Excuse me. So, yeah, uh, worldwide arms are going and then Centre of Britain. I look around here and a lot of my stuff in here is Centre of Britain Army Surplus. All right, yeah, it is Army Surplus. It is a shelf filler mainly, but I've got some good stuff off them. M62 West German helmet with a bullet strike on the front. I can't remember what it cost me. If that's not a man cave item, well, I'm a Dutchman. Well, I'm not actually, but anyway, right, so, but we don't know what Right, so, 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 so. John Shanahan, Aero Military Collectibles, sent me a care package because he knew. And I was feeling extra sad myself and I needed some military to cheer myself up. So what he did send me as part of, I'll do I'll do a different bit. He sent me this Panzer Grenadier Brewer. He also sent me a West German Luftwaffe. I think it was called Luftwaffe. West German Air Force visor cap. Now, I already have one. But you can't have too many visor caps. That's what my mum used to say to me all the time. <clears throat> so this one is in rather large, still helmet size, stand size head. This one's smaller. Now, you see the badges? Uh, well, the one that John sent me didn't have a badge, so I bought one off a coin dealer. But you see the difference? This is, looks. I think this is more more of a modern one. I think this is an older one in brass. West German experts out there. Uh, this one here is dated 1974. You see that's upside down. 1974. And the one I got off John is dated... 1978, you see that? And it's got the the serviceman's name inside, which is a nice touch. Unfortunately, it's too small for me. It doesn't have that crushed effect like the other one. So it might be, it might not be correct for the cap being an older one, but it's quite nice, I think nicer. It's, this has got a crackle effect. See that on the front where the other one hasn't? I did notice, again, I mean, I, some people know me for years think that it's weird that I do all this sort of stuff now I've always been a collector of things but obviously this has manifested itself in a in a bigger way if you're into history collect things you don't have to do what I'm doing you don't have to have a loft full of crap with a shed full of crap you collect things and it, it, it turns your hand you have to start researching them 
So you don't have to do YouTube videos. You start researching, you learn more about the things that you're watching on, I guess the film, on films and documentaries. So these two are uh, ideal Cold War items, which I like having in my collection. But the shelf fillers as well. Shelf fillers, shelf fillers. Where there's a gap, you've got a shelf to fill. Would I want a, a real German one from World War Two? Yeah, I, I would worry about them being faked. And I noticed on eBay the day someone was selling what they were calling uh, post-war German naval tunics that they were actually um, post-war Air Force and they went like hook I bid on one and it went phew, the price went right up because again I'm not an expert on this someone might correct me up until a certain date see the blue on this this uh, West German Air Force cap quite dark compared to the more uh, that colour from the Second World War the, the, the Air Force the Luftwaffe had a more of a, a uh, it was slightly different the colour. You have to. I can't describe it. But the I think the post-war ones up till the sixties were similar in colour. And I looked into it a bit, and people do convert them into Second World War ones. So there you go. Cheaper way of doing it. Stop gassing, gassing. And that leads me nicely onto the other little present that John sent me. There you go. Look at that. Look at that piece of kit. Right. So this is the S six NBC respirator ser or service respirator number six or respirator. NBC S6, number one, Mark 1. So, previously, I think... Oh, I actually get it down, Anna. Oh, nothing's easy in the man cave. Oh, I can't be bothered. How am I lifting all that crap down from here? Look, I'll just show you. There we go. See? Lightweight respirator. So that replaced that, I think. And this, in, it, in turn, itself was um, replaced by the S10. So it was developed in the 1950s. And it was in service from 1966, 1986. It was designed by the Science and Technological Lab, made by the Leyland Birmingham Rubber Company and the Avon Rubber Company, uh, developed by the chemical, and we're looking at notes, honest, <laughs> Defence Experimental Establishment. Uh, after the, they stopped using these in 1986, the Turkish Army developed their own uh, version of the, this and they produced it into the 1990s. Famously, Famously used in the siege, uh, Iranian siege by the SAS. Go, 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 go. Don't worry. See, I'm, get, I'm getting at this. I'm getting at it. Don't worry. So, this is a. I should have probably checked the maker, shouldn't I? GD. I would say it's on there. Press. Does it say press? S6. Looking for the maker's mark. Probably should have done this before I uh, set the video up, but uh, you know me, viewer. Complete buffoon. N. Uh, can't find the maker's mark on it, so you just have to. So I found a date. There's a date. Oh, it's the, it is the Leyland and Birmingham Rubber Company. So there you go. I don't know if that's a rarer one. I always thought they were up made by Avon, but. So 19. 1978, 73. Tell you what, it's terrible having to wear glasses. And when you're in, you don't come on video and watch them. How, how long can I talk crap about nothing, really? Just to get my face on YouTube. So I'll get that. I don't know if it'll focus, but you can see there's the date. 1978. And the the bag that came with it. I'll get the bag. What the fuck was this track out there or something? Anyway, right, I'll get back to get back to the point. Well no, there's historical content going on here. The bag's a bit earlier, I think. That's got a, a date on it somewhere. <laughs> ah, so the bag is dated. Did you get that? 1973. Now the bag's quite a natty item. It uh, has a little pouch inside for the filter to go in. And it's uh, obviously that root like uh, like nylon, rubberized nylon, I think it is. Obviously to stop chemicals getting into it. Very nice item. Um, right. Back to the gas mask. So, John didn't have a filter for it. So, this is the beauty of being involved with people online, a collector's forum if you like. We all help each other out. Sir Jim of Timber, Jim Timber, Jim Timber 2, his two channels, great bloke, top fella, lives in Poland, and he sourced me this. It did come in a, like a sealed, it was a sealed unit, a sealed foil, like plastic foil uh, bag, which my wife threw out, so I couldn't show you that. And it did have a, a stick around here, uh, Avon filter, which I've took off to make it look more military, because although it does fit, it is not the correct filter for this, not the period correct filter for this, um, uh, gas mask. 
believe the original ones were a bit thinner so this probably wouldn't fit in the bag anyway but it was dated 2014 2015 so i'll give this gas mask a clean up uh i always do with everything up high yeah, just you feel like you get a bit of ownership i suppose but there's no reason that i couldn't wear this in a shit hits the fan scenario a zombie apocalypse if the zombies were throwing tear gas at me there's no reason why you couldn't wear this i don't think uh Maybe someone will go, oh, you shouldn't. I know, I know there's a thing about asbestos, but this does not contain asbestos. Now, another thing that I didn't know, this is why you should collect things. Tags on gas masks. I didn't know about that. So obviously that must have been for identification purposes. Uh, and this is L C I I C Col Colwell M, so medium is it, nine and a half. And then I presume that's his service number. I'll give you a look at it, see what you think. I didn't realise that about uh, tags on um, gas masks, but a lovely item. Uh, thanks to Jim for sending me the filter and for, for John for um, sending me the mask. Excellent, really, really pleased with that. Uh, I, I mean, I'd, someone commented a while ago on my channel and said, oh, you used to just collect World War II stuff, World War I stuff, and you, you don't seem to have a specific area you're interested in. Yeah, probably right. Probably right. I like this. I like military in general. Uh, anything up till just before the First World War, till the end of the Cold War, uh, and and beyond, I suppose. I just I like collecting military, and the more I collect it, the more I learn about the things that have gone before, things that are coming afterwards. And it also you're collecting stuff. I might if you see something one day, I think oh, I'll have that. I don't really have a use for it, and I can pass it on to one of my top chums in the online world. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how it goes, isn't it? Um, so that's me again talking for nearly 12 minutes talking crap really so that's the s6 respirator made famous by the ses in the uranium siege with a more modern filter on but i think that looks absolutely fantastic and it does look very nice on display in the man cave i'm gonna have to get another i have to get another mannequin because i want to do a sort of british soldier with that on with the uh, mark 6 helmet and um, I've got some, a load of stuff off John, which I'll video review over the coming weeks. I mean, there's not really much to say about this uh, this beret. Uh, it's 19... It's 5th, 1988, and it's made by Compton Webb, Derby. Okay, so I have uh, I had to loosen the little strings a bit because I've got a massive, horrible, ugly, bald head. So, yeah, I had to... Oh no, wrong, wrong seats, wrong should be there like that. I had to loosen the, um, loosen the little strings at the back. I believe that's how they wear them. Hands are grenadier. Very, uh, there's a badge. See the badge? See the badge? That's very nice. I actually have a West German tunic, but I think it's for like armoured division or something, tanks, I think, I think. But, you get a nice little bit of uh, Cold War memorabilia. So that's my S6 respirator. That's the bag, it comes in. These are my two West German Air Force visor caps. I've got more visor caps now coming out. I'm coming out of the ears, all eight of them. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'll have to build a bigger man cave. Right, where's that button gone? No, oh, here it is. Is it gonna play? Still, this is Stan. See ya. <clears throat> See ya.